coming right up, Straight Talk with Art Levine. Our show tonight, a conversation with Colonel David W. Sutherland, U.S. Army, Special Assistant to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the Director of Program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. Great Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We're very honored to have as our guest for the entire show tonight, Colonel David W. Sutherland, U.S. Army, Special Assistant to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mullen. Uh, Colonel, welcome to our show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit us from Washington, D.C. Uh, we first met uh, last Memorial Day when you spoke very movingly at the Memorial Day Remembrance at Green Hills Memorial Park. And more recently, you were out here in California to be at the dedication of the new Veterans Memorial in Redondo Beach. Uh, what does it mean to you to be out visiting these communities? Well, it gives me an opportunity to, to showcase our, uh, the courage that I've seen on the battlefield uh, by our service members, our, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coasties uh, as we uh, execute the decisions that are made by uh, policymakers. Uh, the courage that we see on the battlefield and then connecting the communities to those service members that give so much, and not just the service members, but the families and our families of our fallen as well, uh, so that they understand what's going on and the, the, the valor that we see, not only during combat, but also when the, the, the service member comes home. Uh, it also gives me an opportunity to thank the veterans that set the standards for us uh, before uh, we uh, that served before us, and uh, to thank the Vietnam veterans uh, whose courageous acts have allowed us to face and discuss the effects of combat, post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. Uh, because of them, we're able to have open discussions about these two manifestations that have, uh, where our service members come home, they may look the same, but they're acting differently. And so displaying that and talking about it and getting the communities to connect with the military. So it's a huge honor. I know it was a sad episode when uh, our Vietnam veterans came home, many of whom were not greeted with open arms and disrespected in many ways. In fact, our, our first Straight Talk show dealt with uh, Operation Desert Salute, where there was a parade for the first time. And some of them told me it was the first time they had put on their uniform since the war. But it's very different now. There, there is enormous goodwill in the community for our servicemen and women. And, and that's exactly right. The, Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, my boss, uh, talks about his experiences of coming home. He uh, 
graduated from the Naval Academy in 1968. In fact, he's from Southern California, grew up in San Fernando. And uh, he talks about uh, how things have changed uh, since he came home from his uh, deployments. And uh, what we've seen is what he characterizes as a sea of goodwill, a desire now by the, the, the population of America to want to help, to want to assist our returning warriors, our families, families of a fallen, uh, as they reintegrate into civil society. And so this has been a tremendous opportunity to, again, to connect that and connect leaders in the communities uh, to our returning veterans and, and warriors and families and families of the fallen. And it's so unfair to warriors because regardless of whether you agree or disagree with the particular mission or war, uh, these men and women are just doing their jobs and doing it bravely, and uh, uh, they are executing the policy. They're not originating it. Well, and, and you see this on the battlefield. I have, uh, they go places you can't imagine, and they do things that are absolutely stupendous, and, and they do them uh, in such a way that they're loyal, they're disciplined, both individually and collectively. And, and they're just amazing on what they achieve. And then when they come home and leave that family that they've served with under the harshest of conditions and then make that transition back into civil society, we want them to be, uh, to have that capacity for greatness taken to a level of greatness. I've read in several uh, places that the military, uh, the volunteer army and the volunteer military that we have today is, is the, the finest and best that we've had in our history. Can you speak to that? Well, the chairman says it's the finest he's ever been associated with today, and he's served for uh, over four decades. Uh, it is, as a commander on the battlefield, and I commanded several thousand uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in combat during the surge uh, when I was in Diala province, just northeast of Baghdad. And they serve because they want to. They're not forced to. They serve for their buddies, they serve for their families, and they serve for their communities, and they believe in their mission. And because of that, they believe the best is yet to come. And they believe that they, can, they have a faith in something they can't see, and that faith is that at the end of the day, they will make a difference and they serve so honorably. And then when they come home, they want to continue that service, and they want to be active members of society and contributing members of society, and they will wow. because of those characteristics. Wow. Well, I'd like to uh, make an appeal. We enjoy the benefits of what our military men and women do for us, and particularly in this holiday season, we can support organizations that provide help uh, to our troops, such as the USO, and uh, we'll put uh, their address up at the end of this segment, and if you'd like to send a contribution to help the USO provide uh, facilities at airports and near bases, both stateside and overseas, your contribution will be welcome. And also something you can do at no cost when you see a serviceman or woman in an airport or somewhere, just thank him or her for their service. We'll be right back after these messages. Electricity is different from any other product we use. We can't store it. We must use it wisely, but can't do without it completely. And there's no substitute for this special form of energy that brings us light, comfort, and progress. That's why California needs new standards that can keep utilities strong, guard against another power crisis, and protect consumers from the kind of shortages that often affect other commodities. Because electricity is different.